uh, Viper Team Marika. Entry, and oh, look at that. There's your bit of closing speed as we jumped onto the back camera and rocketing past was one of their Mercedes. That is unbelievable. And speaking of Mercedes, right now, Alan Decadene is down in pit lane with a driver who just came out of the number five Mercedes. I'm with Christoph Bouchot. Uh, Christoph, you can never underestimate Mercedes. Your car seems to be running beautifully. Yes, uh, we have absolutely no problem. We are very happy because uh, after uh, the qualifying, we lost the third uh, cars. And that it, it was not so good, but now everything is okay. The car is uh, very reliable. And um, we, we can follow the rhythm of BMW and Toyota. So now the rest for sure. It's a very long rest, so we cross the finger and then we will see. How hard are you driving the car though? It seems to be driven pretty hard to me. Yes, true. The first thing was uh, hard because uh, we, the strategy of Mercedes was to, to follow the rip of Toyota. But not too much because for sure it's a race of 24 hours and the second thing was more, more cool. Thank you very much. I think, Andrew, you've got... In Thursday qualifying, number four, look at this car. Didn't look bad from the front, but Mark Weber had the car flip on him and uh, you can see he was carried off uh, they were be it, it was precautionary he ended up fine if not a little sore and stiff then in the warm-up this morning in a different part of the track it flipped again by itself no contact just running up behind a car and over a rise it went over once again it created the, there's norbert haug of mercedes there was a great deal of consternation should they run the cars should they withdraw them all mark weber of course had to be concerned and he has to feel a bit like a cat who's using up lives because in free qualifying going into one of the Mozan chicanes as the uh, they had to withdraw it they closed the uh, doors there Sam and Webster uh, I mean they are obviously the uh, world record holder for changing transmission innards but uh, it doesn't do much good it still takes them right out of contention particularly in this race which is being run uh, to such a hot pace by so many people I mean, the Panos, for example, is doing beautifully, uh, but it's back in, in eighth. It's run the fastest lap of uh, three minutes, 40 seconds. Uh, and and I mean, that compares beautifully with the fastest lap overall of 3.37. So, I mean, they, they're running fast, but they're way back. It's that, it's that intense. It is very intense, and you can see that now on the monitor on the screen as the number two Toyota is being hounded uh, by one of the Mercedes. And, I mean, this is the kind of action we've seen and you can see it it is definitely closing in on nightfall here that uh, that uh, soft light of dusk and those headlights are absolutely blaring as those two cars head into the chicane and that is the number two toyota sitting in uh, second and the number five mercedes in third and uh, we have seen this type of action the whole time meanwhile serenely out front the bmw and we hate to jinx it but the bmw is uh, just continuing to lap but oh here goes the mercedes trying White to find a way by there. somebody slow go Ooh, i wouldn't have done that that's brave. That was very brave for him to pull down the inside there with a white flag being waved because you never know what's just over that brow. 20 the Nissan in the pit. Yeah, that's the uh, Courage 52 with the Nissan engine, Cotez, Goosens, and Ekblom. We also had a brief shot of a wounded Porsche, the number 66 car, trying to find its way back into the pits with a uh, left rear tire uh, that was messed up. Meanwhile, here is that battle once again. And uh, that uh, Porsche obviously blended the uh, the attack by the Mercedes, but oh, oh! it has gone oh again. My God, there it is. It's into the trees. Right. Unbelievable. Oh. That is what we have seen twice already this weekend, and that one went off track. That is just devastating. They of course will have to withdraw instantly the, the other, other car. car. There's no question of doing it now. We have just seen one of the most dramatic moments that you will ever see. It's the second time in history that a Mercedes has actually left the track here. The other time back in 1955 with disastrous results. The other two times here in the last few days, the car actually stayed within the bounds of the track, but this one is off in the woods. Here's the replay, and uh, again... Uh, the Mercedes right behind the Toyota, just in that dead air area. And look there. at that, that's wow. exactly the terror of it thank fortunate did not hit the bridge but you can see how high up it got Whoa. looks like it may have landed on, on its, its wheels. wheels this could have a happy ending yet but of course it's much too early to say Get that the was other uh, car off the track three full flips uh, in that car and uh, that is uh, just terrible. I think I'm well I'm not sure exactly who was behind the wheel I don't want to uh, 
to make a guess at it. Let's watch it again. And uh, it's just, a, it's an uphill approach here. And it's just right here. I mean, there's no rise here. It just took off right there. But there is a crest of a hill there, uh, Greg. It's, it's very slight, but uh, it's enough. Oh, indeed. That is one of the unforgettable images. Good Lord alive. Look at that. Straight can you imagine being in that car? Can you imagine being in that car? It doesn't look as if he hit any big trees. Hopefully not. And again, you pointed out that it landed, that it landed. Oh, man, let's go down to Andrew. The number six is in. Yeah, the number six is coming now, now dropping the door, as you can see. And that's it. And I would say the Mercedes-Benz effort is over. Well, what a horrible, horrible accident. We'll bring you an update on that. But uh, that is the end of Mercedes-Benz. Obviously, the wrong decision to actually race. And it, interesting, wasn't it, that uh, we, had, we had talked to... Uh, Andrew, Andrew, if you can still hear me, uh, do you know who was driving the number five? We're just checking that out right at the moment. Okay, Andrew, we'll wait for you to get back to us on that. It was in the car. It was interesting, wasn't it, that Schneider had just said they'd made changes to the car and it felt awesome. Yeah. You just don't know. Unbelievable development. And uh, there See, it is. Uh, one of the most famous names in racing in a company which derived a lot of its legendary reputation from its accomplishments here, even though they only won two races so far. Somehow Mercedes was linked with Le Mans, partly through tragedy, partly through grand achievement. Uh, but this is a moment that will certainly not be quickly forgotten. Now you can see, obviously, just tremendous concern by all the members of the, uh, of the Mercedes team. Just going around that little right-hand corner there, over that brow, lost there from behind that Toyota. And it just took off. And, and it uh, just took all the air off the front, let the front come up. Wow. Either Heidfeld or Dumbreck we hear at the wheel. Uh, One of the two of rookies. Course, the, yes, right, Christophe Bouchou, a former winner here. Uh, Heidfeld, the uh, uh, sensation of Formula 3000 this year. And Peter Dumbreck, uh, a very nice young man that we had the privilege of meeting just the other day. He's been doing Formula 3000 or Formula Nippon in Japan, it's called. This is not the kind of advertising Mercedes uh, likes to have. I think they're putting the safety car out because he went. Welcome back to Le Mans, and that is the shot overhead. That is where the Mercedes ended up. And as you can see, it indeed cleared the big trees and, and ended into, uh, landed in a hollow. And it did appear to end up right side up. It, uh, it uh, rotated quite a bit, of course. Uh, but it is uh, parked right there, and as you said, it is not in any big area. But you can see just to the, about the middle of the, of the screen to the right, there is a big area. That's where it hit, bounced, and then stopped. So it definitely got away off, uh, off the track, but uh, it was carrying a heck of a lot of speed, and it got awfully high at the same time. You know time. what it looks like? An aircraft accident. <laughs> That's but then landing in those was. trees like that and sliding backwards through the trees, uh, it would be losing energy all the time. So uh, hopefully Mr. Dumbrecht's in pretty good shape. Uh, there's a very good chance I think that he's going to be A-OK -okay because it certainly lost a lot of speed in quite a few feet. They were able to get quite to a few easily feet. too. Look, David, uh, the door basically was either torn off or just openable there. That looks pretty good. The car's just sitting there. I mean, it looks a lot worse than it really is. I think so, and uh, let's check in once again with Andrew. Yeah, just very quickly here, I've just been urged out of the Toyota garage. The number one car has come back in again, and they've got the bodywork off, and they're looking at the transmission, so... When it hit, it must have somehow pivoted and landed like that, but the fact that it's right side up, of course, is always great news. Well, you know, there's an accident that started at over 200 miles an hour. Uh, I mean, that's a pretty telling, uh, you know, a car getting airborne at that speed goes a long way. Yeah, indeed it does. Uh, Alan DeCadney. I've seen quite a few of these uh, unfortunate accidents. We had Van Lennep in a 908 Porsche at the Nürburgring one year. He flipped the thing in front of me and it looked really, really terrible. It landed upside down and we all jumped out. Unfortunately, that one caught fire. Now, there's no fire here, you see. That's the blessing that at least there's no fire. So at least there's oxygen. So the guy can breathe inside there. And 
I'm looking at that crash site. I tell you, I think that accident was survivable. I really do think that the speed of the car was uh, uh, minimized by falling by, by, by going through the air there, the drag of that underbody. It looked like a really horrible, spectacular accident, but I am quite confident that that was survivable, believe it or not, because the car is basically in one piece. It landed on its wheels, and I, I'm really hoping, and I said before, I'm praying that he's going to be okay. That accident was survivable. Well, I think you're absolutely right, and as we're looking at the uh, at the footage now, they they have uh, Peter Dubrek, and they're going to take him to the ambulance, but when you look at the car, the driver's cell, as they call it, Sam, looks very, very much intact. The windshield isn't even broken. Correct. So, uh, I think, uh, I think uh, we hope, certainly, that it is very, very good news, no question. We will be back and uh, certainly update you as 